I'm Mason Mount. You're listening to the London is Blue podcast. The next one we have is um, a very funny conversation at this point because there's been one match played this season and Derek on Discord saying, how much patience is the right amount for now? I mean, Dan. We're talking about patience after one game. Is it too early to talk about patience, even though Chelsea are renowned for not not having any of it? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, we are the hallmark for what a patient and thoughtful and introspective and reflective club is. Basically like a Zen monk, you know, just sitting atop a mountain for years without uttering a single word. We have the ability to remain silent and not do anything. Um, Earthquakes, tsunamis, you know, we'll just we'll let them blow by. No, no, our, our, you know, people are writing headlines and stories already because that's just the nature of spinning up the the horses around Chelsea and getting people in the firing line as quickly as possible. The, I think the patience ultimately should be pretty much limitless this season, given the circumstances, given the immense handicap. I think. The things that I would look to put in place as success criteria for this season, and again, we can only take an understanding what the club deems success to look like this season, I think is going to have to be is have you, in all of this, been able to make two to three players that have come through our academy first team players? Because a English player on today's market that is a starting player in the Premier League, just look at Harry Maguire, goes for 80 million pounds. Like, that is stupid money. And so if the club, at times, has looked to figure out how to make money and they're not going to be able to sell some of these players or they want to eventually sell them in the future because that has been a part of our business model, that is something that is going to require patience because we're going to see performances like yesterday where we get the opportunity to watch players like Mason Mount grow into the moment, like Tammy Abraham grow into the moment. I mean, the only thing that we couldn't accept is going down this season – I, again, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think that's going to be where we stay for too long. I think we will finish top four. But I think that's the type of patience people have to have, Nick, is this the perspective of where we are and what the moment is. Yeah, I mean, look, if we lose our first 13 matches 4-0, color me worried, okay? Color me <laughs> concerned. I don't think that's going to happen. I do think it's going to be a rough August and September, though. And as a fan and as a supporter, as a person who goes to matches or goes to the pub in the States to, to watch the matches or wherever you are, you you have to go into this early part of the season realizing that seven preseason matches and a bunch of upheaval in the preseason, especially the David Luiz thing at the end, is not enough to just roll in and and pretend like you're – Uh, Like you're going to win the league. It's just not enough. Uh, Frank has a lot of work to do. And, you know, I loved his interview yesterday. I think that he gave me a lot of confidence that, you know, he he was seeing the game the way that I saw the game without without most of the theatrics. It reminded me a lot of those old school Mourinho press conferences, Brandon, where, you know, he would just immediately say the four or five things that like everybody knew, but in a ton more detail and with a lot more clarity um this this team needs your patience this team needs everybody to just chill out for a little bit and and let it get ugly it's like the first time you grow a beard you have to let it get disgusting before it looks good and we're gonna have to go through that a little bit so to me you have to have patience into at least the second match because at you least said it. Well, listen here, right? Because it it all matters how you respond. How, what do you change? How do the players react? Do we see progress? As you said, if we go out and get absolutely rolled by Leicester, and then we get rolled and rolled, and we see the huge gaps between the defensive, we see Zuma giving up penalties, we see Pedro passing the ball relentlessly to the other team, you know, Tammy unable to hold up the ball. If all these things continue to happen, concerns, red, you know, the sirens will go off, the red flags will go up. But as you mentioned, Frank acknowledges he saw what happened. 
he unfortunately doesn't even have a full week of training. He really has like two days worth of training because of the travel to Turkey and back for the Super Cup. Um, we need to see improvement. And so, like I said, at a minimum, you have to give someone two games because you have to see how they respond. And I think that's what owners and especially Roman and fans always look at is what do you do in a run, right? The Premier League, they always show your form over five matches. What have you done in five matches? That's a nice little clip of where you're at in the season. So to me, I think let's get to five matches and see where we're at. Are we seeing progress? Are we seeing the same mistakes happen over and over? And then we can give a little bit of a judgment and analysis in that sense. But holy smokes, like, yes, worst case scenario yesterday, barring any injuries. I've gone on the record many times saying that. But you, you got to give him a chance to to change it and, and redeem himself and the players a chance to redeem themselves, too. And and I hate to I hate to sound like a, a you know an ass hat on this, but like what other choice do we have? <laughs> like guys it, freaking out right now about look an admittedly terrible you know result from an optics perspective, but not an overall terrible performance. It just makes you look like you don't know what you're talking about. And it's not to say that we're the only right voice out there. It's it's to say that like. There are just so many uh, things to look forward to this season that if you if you shit the bed now and you get all upset, then then I'm going to have a really t- hard time as a fan accepting you when you come in and celebrate later on when we do something good. Like you have to have a steady approach to these things, and the season is one thirty eighth done. <laughs> look, there's a lot of time. Yeah, for better or for worse, we will find out. Uh, question, Lampard out question mark is the next one. Speaking and of getting smashed in the face. Don't, don't worry. Logan JS on Discord is not at fault for this. So his question is, what is your opinion of the fans on the Fifth Stand app and other social media places stating, quotes, Lampard out already? My thought is disappointment in those fans. Uh, Nick, I bet you would love to apparently smash some people in the face over this, but it's just kind of, I mean, look, it's just silly. We don't really need to get into it too much. If you're Lampard out already, you were never Lampard in from the beginning. Yeah. Look, these people should have to line up and take a, take an Emerson shot to wherever it goes. Um, and, and just accept that as punishment for stupidity. Um, I pay them no mind in the fact, you know, this will be the last time we address these morons on the show, but it is just such a short sighted, you know, idealistic, sorry, you know, pro sorry or pro Conte Dan thing that, you know, the, the minute that something goes wrong for not your guy, you, you know, kind of take to the streets and said, aha, I told you it's been one game. It's not even worth mentioning really. No, but I think it's worth just reminding people that, you know, in these moments, you want to just ignore those comments. They're not coming from someone who actually enjoys watching Chelsea, supporting Chelsea. I mean, you have Chelsea's greatest ever player as our manager. And all I needed to see after that match was the two minute interview he did on Sky Sports, where he talked about knowing exactly what the mistakes were, knowing about the things that he hasn't really brought up as a concern in the preseason, the transfer ban, the injuries, and took it on the chin. And I think what we saw is someone who who knows what he's up against, who knows what the solutions are. Again, if we can point it on a podcast, very likely that the wonderfully trained and quite brilliant squad that he's put together with way more funding is going to be able to figure it out. I'm not concerned in the slightest. I think... All of these are going to be great lessons, and I think it's the fans who learn to go through a tough time. I mean, I think we have really only had one super tough season uh, in recent memory, and that was Mourinho's second coming in the final year. You know, even the you know unfortunate Conte season, this Passari season. I mean, they still all have been really good memories, and so I think the thing is, bank on what we've done really well trust the process to steal a 76ers phrase and just go forward, Brandon. Okay. Well, that is indeed what we will do. I mean, again, you're, 
if if you're laying part out, it's because you're not basing it really on on facts or being objective. It's it's a purely an emotional thing with an agenda behind it. And a lot of times it's just to get a reaction. This might surprise some of you, uh, but people uh, are trolls on Twitter. <laughs> Spoiler, sorry, um, but that's just the way it is. So uh, I appreciate all your questions. Appreciate all the questions that came in on Discord. You guys are amazing on there. Uh, again, if you want to get your question in, just join up through Patreon and get in on the Discord server. We're going to take a real quick break. Uh, appreciate these sponsors when we get back. Uh, Nick has some goodies for you all, some savings, some discounts, and then we'll talk about the Liverpool Super Cup match midweek. 